I'm in the lab looking at our next big project. This is a pliosaur. What you see is the skull and part of the neck. Now we're working on reconstructing this and the rest of the skeleton so that we can put copies into museums around the world. To fill you in on what a pliosaur is, I'm going to talk to Anthony, the curator here at the Dinosaur Resource Center. Can you yes. tell us what is a pliosaur? All right, pliosaur is a marine reptile. It's um, basically an ocean-going murdersaurus. It's um, it's a plesiosaur, but of the very many families of plesiosaurs that you know about, like the Loch Ness monster, the long necks one, it wasn't one of those. It was a short-necked plesiosaur with a huge head on it. Okay. Uh, pliosaurs died out about 85 to 90 million years ago in the uh, basically the middle of the Cretaceous period. They didn't even make it to the end of the dinosaurs. Now, this pliosaur was originally found in Manitoba. It was donated to the Manitoba Museum, and uh, one of our crews went up there um, and basically brought some silicone north of the border, molded all the parts of it, and uh, brought back the molds for us to work with rather than trying to deal with all the logistics of bringing original fossils back across international borders. We do a lot of collaborative efforts with uh, institutions um, all over the world. We've worked with the uh, University of Kansas, we've worked with, who else have we worked with? Royal Saskatchewan. Oh yeah, Royal Saskatchewan Museum, the Burpee Museum, um, all kinds of places where um, they'll have really cool specimens and uh, they allow us to mold them and do the restoration work rather than having them be a pile of bones in a drawer for a hundred years. We can, we can make them into 3D skeletons and they go on display and people love them. We're getting ready to put together our rear flippers for our pliosaur project. Before we do that, we need to make sure that we have a femur for each side. The femur is the upper leg bone in an animal. That's your thigh bone. It's pretty common to find incomplete skeletons. This animal was found with the left rear flipper, but it was missing the right side. So we need to make a right side. We have the left femur here. We know that it's the left side because of this rugosity right here. The rugosity is a rough spot on the bone that lets us know that a tendon or a muscle inserted right there. On this animal, the rugosity on the femur is always on the underside. That's what tells us that it's a left. The femur is distinctive enough that we need to be able to make an opposing side. Since we have the left one on this one, we need to make a right one. In the old days, we would have taken our left femur, we would have set it out on the table, and then by eye, we would have sat there and sculpted a mirror image of it by hand. Now that we live in the future, we can use lasers. We used a laser scanner to scan the femur. That gave us a three-dimensional digital image that we could manipulate inside the computer. From there, we digitally mirror imaged it. We have to make a physical copy from our 3D model. In order to do that, we sent it off to our 3D printer and made one there. Now, our printer is kind of small, so before we sent it to the printer, in the computer we actually chopped the image up into several small pieces because our femur is just too big to fit on our printer. We printed each piece individually, and after they came out, now our next step is to glue them together, fill in any of the gaps, and work on the texture to make it look realistic. Then we're good to go. Brian, Anthony, and I have finished setting out all the individual cast bones according to the lab notes, the field notes, and a photograph that we have of the original. Now we're ready to take this into the back, mold it, and have a final solid unit that we can use for production purposes. We pack clay around the bones to hold them in place and to contain our molding material. Silicone rubber is poured over the bones and left to harden. When the rubber is cured, the bones are removed. Liquid plastic is poured into the empty mold and allowed to harden. This is the cast rear flipper that we just made. You can see how solid and sturdy it is and how easy it's going to be to work with. When we combine that with the femur that we made, you can see that we've got an entire rear limb ready to go and assemble into the final skeleton. Now you've seen some of our reconstruction process. 
We started off with loose bones that we had to research about, categorize, and organize. We had to mirror image and create any elements that were missing. And then we had to mold everything. From there, we could pour them and have a copy that's ready to go for assembly. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Check out some of our other content, or come by and see us in person at the Dinosaur Resource Center in Woodland Park, Colorado. We are always up to something cool. Until then, keep sciencing. <laughs>